go over the FOMC trades on the day. We did not trade today on FOMC. I'm going to show you why in a minute in our portfolio calculator. First, we want to go over what would have worked. Spotted this pattern. I saw this happening intraday. And you can see that the um, there's a lot of pressure just driving up here, driving up here. All morning long, and the ticks were relatively low. S under 700 was the high on the tick. And I said, you know, when it hits 1,000, that'll be the time to sell. You know, oftentimes those tick values will indicate a trend or a counter trend on a day like today. You just get this wild price action on FOMC. You can see it in the NASDAQ. You can see it in the S&P. Look at how much back and forth there is. But overall, the downtrend happens, but a very choppy downtrend. This is a stealth downtrend. You wouldn't have thought that because the market rallies 18 minutes. Overall, the market is up 18 minutes into the um press conference the, the rate rate decision comes out at two and then you see here all the price action and then it rallies it, it sells off here's 230 when the press conference starts so it's up and then it rallies sells off and then rallies 18 minutes into the press conference it's up here and then it's you know it's just kind of wild it's, it's kind of hard to determine what's going to happen and we did not trade today uh but it's kind of a head and shoulders rollover pattern in hindsight. If you take a look at this, which is interesting because the market wanted a quarter point instead of a half. And, you know, it's it's rallied into this. It got what it's wanting. Now it's selling. And so typical uh, forward looking discounting mechanism of the market. There's still a lot of bearish fundamentals. And so we've talked about a stealth bull. Today was a stealth bear, really, because it was hard to hard to spot this trend early on. And so. An hour and five, hour and ten minutes before the cash closed, the market was right here. So what happened in the last hour and ten minutes? A lot of this. And so, what would have had, what would have worked today on the trades plus one thousand was right there. Good shorting opportunity. So you could test this on FOMC, short a plus one thousand, and then it doesn't go to minus one thousand until here. So if you have the plus one thousand and the minus one thousand, the plus one thousand here. Uh, you have to at some point get out profit target and then short it again here. That's the high of the day. And then it comes down here and you could buy it at minus 1000 and then it rallies here and have a profit target at some point. And then it rallies up here to plus 1000 and then you short it again. And so incredible opportunities to short the plus 1000 tick today and buy the 1000 tick. And then, you know, have an exit because um, you'd have to find a good exit strategy as well. So that's what uh, that's what I'm looking at. That's what I'm going to research for FOMC Day. You know, FOMC Day is tricky because it seems to change a lot. And, you know, there's not a lot of not a lot of FOMC days, about 80 a year. And so the last few years, of FOMC has been a little bit wilder. And so there's not the statistical significance of those tr trading on those days. You know, it, it's hard to it's hard to justify at this point. And so just seeing the market tank here into the close, let's look at the trading system signals if they would have worked today. And surprisingly, um, we have in our spreadsheet not to trade today, but the signals would still work. Um, and opening chop is the only strategy on the S&P. The market was so wild, uh, none of the trades were triggered. So plus 287.50 on opening chop today on the S&P. So one signal generated on the S&P. There's five minutes till the cash close right now. And then we had the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ um, tick reversal hit a nice trade, tick reversal 2023. And then tick pullback, minus 2,000. So these two wash out. And then you had uh, EVP1, uh, long only, minus 725. So overall down about minus 4 or 500 today. Minus 27.50 here, and so uh, plus 2,045. So minus 750 uh, for the S&P, and plus 287.50 for the uh, for minus, minus 787.50 for the Nasdaq, and plus 287 for the S&P. With uh, three minutes of the cash close now, so not uh, it would not have been a profitable day overall, and so down day, and we didn't trade it. So I'll show you why we don't. 
So here's the latest portfolio calculator through yesterday, and you see this one, this uh, don't trade on FOMC one means we don't trade on FOMC. If you make it zero, it means you do trade on FOMC. So look at the total profit over drawdown. Let's also look at the max drawdown number, and let's take this and set it to zero. And this number goes down from around 7,500 to around 7,100, rounding those numbers. And this number goes up by about 1,500, I believe. And so we just stick with this, and we go with the data, and this works a little better. And so this is the latest portfolio calculator through Tuesday, March the 21st. And so those are the trading system signals on the day. I'll be testing, I'm always testing new strategies. I'm testing a lot of strategies strategy ideas for FOMC, FOMC Minutes, CPI, Jobs Friday. And so it's a it's an interesting market environment that we're in. And we are um, glad to be up on Monday and Tuesday this week and up on the month and up on the year right now. And those are the trading hypothetical trading system signals for Wednesday, March the 22nd, 2003. Hey, David Bean here. Welcome to Capstone Trading Systems YouTube page. Be sure to subscribe to join our community of algorithmic traders. We are real money traders. We share our winning streaks. We share our losing streaks, as well as market updates, strategies, and coding tips.